What if AI ran a government? Impossible? Not really, and here's why. My name is Sean Batir, and I'm a director of ML and a senior AI engineer. And today, I'll tell you about how AI can help us run a government. Now it's no doubt that the global artificial intelligence market is growing rapidly. It's poised to continue growing, thanks to the majority of Fortune 100 companies pushing for research and innovation in AI. I should know, I work for one of them. As of July 2020, according to Grandview Research, the global AI market was valued at $39.9 billion, and their CAGR, that's compound annual growth rate, is projected to be around 42.2% from 2020 to 2027. So that's all well and great, but first, what actually is artificial intelligence? Well, AI was referred to as the science and engineering of making computers behave in ways that until recently, we thought required human intelligence. Now within the broad field of AI, the generally agreed upon goal is the creation of a robotic brain or agent that can emulate the brain's ability to perceive, navigate, problem solve, and reason in the world. Likewise, when you hear about machine learning, you can think about machine learning as a subset of artificial intelligence. Now machine learning requires learning from data, and this aligns with Dr. Tom Mitchell, a pioneer in machine learning, who also claimed that ML is the study of computer algorithms that allow computer programs to automatically improve your experience. Now you might be wondering, has anyone ever thought about bringing AI and ML to the government? Actually, yes. Here in the United States, our country is actively working on how to improve how we run things. Technology in the private sector is constantly expanding, innovating, and transforming industries from retail and healthcare to automotive and education. In fact, I just discussed this with the United States Office of Science, Technology, and Policy last year in 2019. Now, did you all know, for instance, that on February 11, 2019, President Trump signed an executive order announcing the American AI Initiative. Now, this document outlines our national strategy on artificial intelligence, and our vision is to bring a powerful feedback loop and spirit of collaboration across the innovation ecosystem between federal agencies, the private sector, nonprofits, and even academia. While today, there are only around 2,000 companies in the US focused on AI, that number is expected to skyrocket by the end of this decade in 2030. Now, can we take this knowledge and apply it to governing a nation or even a country? Well, any machine learning algorithm is only as good as its data. Now, some of the essential key ingredients for any ML project are to have quality data, a clear understanding of your target, and a measurable method of scoring success or a positive outcome. You see, the truth is that I view artificial intelligence as the great augmenter of humans. I hold a vision of augmented government, of building tools that help humans make smarter and better decisions that are unbridled by our individual cognitive biases. For example, why do we accomplish more with teams? Well, in part, it's because of diversity. You're already seeing the first effects of this today. Peter Diamandis once said, the average person with a smartphone today has access to more information about the world than the President of the United States did in 1994. And this is so true. I've been able to collaborate with colleagues in Germany and Malaysia thanks to tools like Zoom and Microsoft Teams. Instead of building a project by myself, I can roll out new features in this grand process of co-creation with colleagues worldwide. Instead of being lone amoebas floating around, we're like coordinated cells spreading across the earth building the mesh of this new age, this new organ of humanity. Now when I was seven, I had to learn the Dewey Decimal System and visit my public library to find a book on a topic. Now, Google gives me the ability to basically type in a search bar and find the answer in literally seconds. And with a sudden deluge of information, it can be so hard to keep track of it all. I mean, think about it. Now, the information is at our fingertips. But how do we make more informed decisions with this wealth of knowledge? These are only some of the questions that we need to ask as world governments and multinational corporations begin rolling out AI. One possible paradigm is a nation governed by a synthetic technocracy. Now under this purview, the technocracy half refers to prioritizing national level decision makers with technical backgrounds, trained in science and technology guiding our nation, instead of the current disproportionate representation of lawyers, businessmen, and managers that occupy Congress. Likewise, the synthetic part of a synthetic technocracy involves the active involvement or consultation of perhaps a non-human or AI-based agent, 
Now, of course, in their early phases, these AI agents might just be some variation of a collaborative filtering algorithm with a naive Bayes classifier. What's that? Basically, think about how Amazon recommends books that you like based on your previous shopping history. However, what if you enrich this data to instead build a government agent that shows policies based on previous politicians and decision makers? This is absolutely addressable. The key questions you would have to ask are, what are the key features or parameters in the decision that you made? How do I measure the degree of success? And finally, what is my target objective or what are you trying to achieve? In fact, if you guys want to engage in this thought experiment with me about how we can build an AI for government, then definitely follow up with me directly in the, either the comments below or email me. Now, none of this is impossible. And our technology is definitely at a point where we can build out some production-ready recommendation systems. This type of ML-based approach runs in the backend of literally hundreds of companies that rely on giving accurate product recommendations to consumers. It's very doable. It's simply a matter of coordinating the people and putting in the time and effort to make it work. Now, I'm sure that some of you are probably more interested in the sci-fi doomsday scenarios that we've seen projected in Hollywood. From Skynet and Terminator, to the Age of Ultron, to an AI that unleashes nuclear devastation on the planet, like Bowser Galactica. I can totally understand why you might think this is looming over the horizon. The truth is, our technology is simply not at that level as of 2020. Now, such a scenario isn't impossible, but we also have been exposed to enough of these doomsday scenarios that it would be foolish for us to not at least build in the protection and safeguards necessary to prevent the end of the world by an AI. On one level, we could roll out a hybrid combination of cybersecurity and operational security tactics to fend our world's nations against this type of threat. However, on another level, we can also make it a priority to consider data ethics and the ethics around the use of applied AI as we develop more advanced systems in this decade. It's our responsibility. And while we are still a far way from an AI system that is equal to a human being in all intellectual capacity, that future of humans living alongside AI systems or agents with expanded capabilities could come into reality within the next half century. And those of us involved in the field are just living in such an exciting time. Machines will undoubtedly replace some of our tasks. For example, in the developed world, like I said earlier, a Google search has already replaced my childhood adventure to a library. However, along with this replacement comes the parallel benefit of augmentation. Humans have always augmented us in ways that we never expected. Think about the second order consequences of air travel for just a second. 100 years ago, only one decade had passed since the Wright brothers had gotten their first airplane in the sky, and the world's first scheduled passenger service set off between Tampa and St. Petersburg. Today, since COVID-19 travel restrictions, regular air travel has resulted in an ease of information flow, collaboration with international teams across Silicon Valley, New York, London, and Munich, allowed more goods, capital, and knowledge to flow easily. And with AI, just like with any technology, there's a potential to augment all parts of ourselves, both good and bad. In homage to First Lady Melania's campaign efforts against cyberbullying, for instance, the internet has unfortunately also made it so easy for us to bully and damage the esteem of literally anyone in the world with an internet connection, half a world away. It's our job to be mindful about the kind of future that we want to unfold, perhaps together, we can shepherd in this new age of AI integration with decision and policy making. Maybe we'll have a synthetic technocracy, or maybe we'll have an augmented democracy. Whatever it is, we are already halfway through 2020. We have the knowledge of the world at our fingertips, so let's work together to make this the decade that we become one. Alright everybody, if you found this video interesting or useful, then please click like and subscribe to my channel. I'm Sean Batir and I'm on a mission to augment humanity and help us transcend our physical and cognitive limitations.